Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dotson Ayodele of Africa X. Uh, I'm here with you to, pre to present you our show, Level Up. Um, we are all at different points as far as career and progression is concerned. And the goal at the end of the day is to end up right there at the pinnacle, at the very top. Nobody wants to start at the bottom and stay at the bottom. So this evening I've brought to, to you a resource, a friend, a professional that I have become acquainted with. His name is Imole Ayo Ashogbon, and he's a human resources professional. He'll be sharing with us his own experience starting his career, growing in it, uh, the impact of immigration, and then settling and then leveling up his own career here in Canada. Um, without taking any more time, I would like you to welcome with me, Imole. Hi, Imole. How are you doing? I'm doing fine, my brother and my friend. Um, I'm, I'm so glad to be here. Thank you for having me. And, uh, you know, knowing you for the past few months has been excellent. And, you know, I'm, I'm really glad to be here. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you very much for that. I appreciate the vote of confidence. <laughs> um, so we'll, let's, let, let's just jump right into it. Uh, as somebody who's practiced your entire career in the field of HR, Speaking to career and career progression is um, a simple thing for you. But can you just tell us a bit about yourself, your, your background as a professional? Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, the, the concept of simple is relative, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we, keep, we, keep, we keep learning. I, I, keep I learning. agree with that. Uh, and the point you get to where you call something simple, you should have... Uh, you should truly be a professor. Even the professor keeps learning, right? So yeah, but definitely. I mean, myself, my career. I, I think I, st I started this journey about twelve years ago. Um, mm. Food concepts back in Nigeria. I I was um, I was there for about three years thereabouts, and I I, I started as an HR associate. You know, uh, HR admin officer. I remember, and later became an HR associate. So. I think that period was a good period for me. I think uh, I, I learned a lot. I had a great boss, a great manager, a great mentor. I still call him mentor. And then the last role I had before I came to Canada was Halogen. So Halogen, I joined as an HR business partner. I quickly rose to become HR advisor for the Southwest. And by the time I was leaving, I was the HR manager uh, for shared services. So. That, that was a robust role. Halogen mm -hmm. in the West was about 6,000 employees, and I was the manager for shared services. And then 2017, uh, we decided to move to Canada. You know, move to Canada, <laughs> it was somewhat like a downslope, right? Um, which is part of the dynamics I'll be sharing. But mm -hmm. we moved to Canada. I remember I did all kinds of jobs, believe you me. I worked in a warehouse. I worked, uh, you know, did all kinds of jobs before I eventually... Some of start, I, well, I wouldn't say I started at the, the base, you know, I was the um, operations team lead um, in a recruitment consulting firm in Calgary. Yeah, I had two people reporting to me, though I was basically a recruiter, but mm -hmm. I felt they felt I had too much experience to call me a recruiter. So I was managing a team, but I was a recruiter, but mm -hmm. I was managing a team. And then one thing led to the other, I got another job um, at the... At the airport, YVR, I became an HR generalist. Though I applied for an HR manager role, <laughs> that's another story. I didn't get that, but I got an HR generalist role, which was good enough. It was an HR business partner role, so yeah, well, yeah. And over 400 employees I was supporting, and but currently I work with Coca-Cola. I'm the HR business partner for uh, BC. So basically, I'm the HR manager for Coca-Cola BC. I support uh, 12 plants. Um, as the HR manager, and uh, yes, that's from a career perspective. That's me. That that's a so that, great so far. That's a that's a nice that's a nice resume, um, <laughs> and that's <laughs> that tells me that you've been there, done that again, right? Yeah. So, uh, with with this wealth of experience, mm -hmm. can, tell us briefly what, what was the impact of immigration on your career. Well, immigration, from where I stand, fantastic. Yep. 
from where I stand, but at the beginning it was not. But I, I would say to you, and which is some of the critical things I want our viewers or listeners to grab, I'll say to you, I, I think I was quite clear from the point we landed, I was clear that I'm not going to start from the base. I, I mean, different news, different information from different places. Some mm. people say you start from the you start from the ground zero. They don't respect your experience here. They don't care. You know, you start from the bottom. And I had this belief that um, I wasn't going to start from the bottom. I understood mm. I could go through a process, which I did go through. Right at that time, I I I, I started volunteering. I remember I was volunteering downtown for as more like a recruitment um, advisor in an a, 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 a NGO right there. And immediately I put that on my resume, the dynamics changed, right? It was then I started getting some calls and all of that. So that's part of the journey, right? But um, in summary, it's been awesome. The name of our show is Level Up. As, yeah. an, as, an, as a HR business partner, what does that mean to you? Okay, so as an HR business partner, in clear terms, uh, I... Um, my job is to um, create, is to is to ensure that the operations, the people, uh, the my clients group have the right support that will make them win at the market. Mm. Right. The bottom line is they must win at the market, and my job is to create that enabling environment by processes, by policies, by interpretations, by advisory role. Right to ensure that all of those employees bring their very best to the workplace. Mm. Right. Yeah. That, that so, if, if I if I want to say I want to build a, I I want to tap into a culture that allows me to take my career to the next level. What are the things that I can do as an individual to position myself such that? My efforts are recognized mm. not as me trying to lift myself up. Yeah. This is effectively what I'm trying to do, though. Mm. But as me trying to contribute so that I can get the recognition that takes me to that next level. Okay. All right. So, so, so based on your question is centered around an internal, an employee already in a, an, an organization who wants to move to the next level, right? Yes. Well, moving to the next level has its parameters, right? Um, mm. I think you you always have to start from the purpose. You always mm. have to start from the objective. What is my objective? Why do I want to? Right? You must be able to, within yourself, clarify. Is it just based on promotion for more money? Or is it, this is a career path that you're pursuing something, right? You just must be clear within yourself. And once you are clear, um, it's like that part of that... Um, wise book that says um, there's a way to the city. The labor of the mm. fool writes him out for he does not know the way to the city. There is a way to the city. Whatever mm. city means to you, it can be within the workplace, it can be within the environment. You must know the way to the city. You must know how to navigate. The certain things that are within your control. So for instance, it's in, it's in your control to constantly empower yourself with knowledge. It's, a, it's, it's in your power, your role to keep upgrading yourself keep learning there's always a better way to do something believe you me right and that's critical then there's always the dynamics of office structures and politics it's also critical that you understand what are the structures uh, well the first structure within any system is your line manager if there's any relationship to invest in with wisdom is relationship with your line manager all right and you build relationship most times based on credibility. So when your life manager knows that you're credible, you get things done, you have the personable personality, you're always willing to learn, you ask the right questions and you work on it, right? That puts you in a good place, right? And then you need to also now begin to understand the political system and structure. Either you like it or yes, the most structured environment has a political system in it. The truth about it is this, that you need to give more to get more. You, there's no way you can deliver at the level of every other person and expect to be You need to go an extra mile. You need to give more, right? Because it's what it is. There's this implicit bias everywhere. But proof, proofs cannot be disproved. The quality of your work, the quality of your relationships, that's another thing.
you you can't you can you can't disprove it. So mm. that's another critical thing you must know if you must grow within an organization. You've known the structure, you know what is required. Second thing is relationships, right? You must you must understand what relationships do I need to invest in, right? And um, people know things. That's what I find out. People can mm. say if you have ulterior motive or if you're selfish, if it's just about yourself, people know it. So how do I say this? Be a good person. <laughs> or better still okay 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 hold on let's let's what you just said now let's dimension that a bit you yes. said be a good person yes um how how do you be a good person mm. that that's a that's a good question we're not going to go philosophical but i put it in simple terms let yeah, as in let something yeah. I, I need concrete, concrete something that is actionable yeah. and yeah. doable yes you be a good person by willing to solve problems for the other people, for the other party, mm. by genuinely interested in those in those individuals or those person, and by genuinely another side of it is being personable. So I find that in this part of the world, being able to make people smile and laugh goes a long way. I find that in decision making table sometimes you hear statements like "Oh, I like him. He's very, he's very nice," or you know, you you. I mean, excuse my words, but kind of sometimes some things are a bit mundane. There are things that make people make certain decisions, right? True. Yeah. True. So, True. so that, yeah. that that what you said right there is very important. The mm. small things have a way of making a big difference. Absolutely. Um, nobody requires you to smile every day. No. When you get to work. No. But if you smile every day, mm. some people will like you for it. And will take certain decisions that happen to be in your best interest simply because believe, you're smiling. Believe in me, what you just said, though, too, is tested and trusted over ages. Either you like it or yes. Just because you're smiling and you're pleasurable, you're ple you know. How do you deal with people who are your line managers and they're either not expressive or they are just downright mean? Well, I mean, there are certain people that truly are downright mean. And there's. They are difficult people to work with. But I find that most times when, when you see those kind of people in an organization, they are result-driven people. That's why, except you're working in an organization that is to to toxic or the culture is really terrible. That's why you have some very high performers who are mm -hmm. mean. They're still there. So you must understand that that's the nature of that person. And everybody has a language. If this person is an high performer, and is a mean person, it means that you have to also be an high performer, right? It means that you have to take your competency to another level because mm. the deep will always call to the deep. The language you will understand that makes sense to him is a language he can relate to it. Results, end of story. Results, end of story. No matter how difficult an individual is, you can always crack them if it's needed to be cracked. There are some things mm. that it's you, it's you that will get cracked at the end of the day. So let's <laughs> <laughs> just, just okay. Me. Now, what is in wrapping this conversation up? What is what advice would you give to somebody who's you know at that position where they're like, okay, how I've been I've been here for a bit, and you know I was a manager back home. I've been at the senior advisor role i haven't been able to get into management take my career to the next level or you know i'm currently still in the doldrums trying to get back into my career mm. i'm trying to get noticed what what one piece of advice do you okay. think is the um i know there's no silver bullet but the closest okay. thing to that all right uh, you think if all these people picked up would make a difference for them that that's a great question and I, I always use myself an example and I belong to a community, um, you know, where we talk about these things. And so the first thing I'll say to you is the mindset is critical. You've touched so much on the mindset. So mm. the mindset mm. is I'm not coming to start from the beginning. It is critical you have that mindset. Another mindset you must have is I have value to offer. I only need to apportion it. I only need to align it. I no need to have a go-to market strategy of my yeah. value. I, I've yeah. solved problems. In fact, the reason why they brought us here you know, we like it or yes, it's come and solve problems. Not at the base level, but at the level with which you are and more, right? So that awareness is critical. The second part of that is education, right? 
um, get more qualifications. Understand your industry and understand the relevant education, the relevant qualification, the le relevant learning that is valuable. Because it's a marketplace, there are competitors. What is your differentiating factor from an educational point of view? You must you must give yourself that edge. I, I, I know people who've been here four or five years, they've not they've not done one thing to add value to themselves from an from a learning perspective. There's no way you can go far in a new system because they call it discrimination, but it's, 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 it is what it is. The Canadian has the educational system. He trusts you more if you go through his own educational system. He believes you have more to offer, right? That's, that's, that theory is not always true, but you give yourself an edge. I remember when I was interviewing for this role, I got that clear feedback three times. They said, I love the courses you chose to pursue. Believe in me, brother, it was an investment. It was a sacrifice within my mm. wife and I. You know, easy at all. Man, no lie. <laughs> <laughs> and we're still in that journey. You yeah. know, but it's an investment. Then the second thing, which is most critical, is networking. Oh, God. Mm. Believe you me, my brother. Your network determines your net worth. It's not a cliche, it's a reality. In Canada, in this environment, I can say this very boldly, right? Networking is a big deal because referral is a big deal. I wouldn't call it nepotism. I don't see that in my own exposure and space. You know, I wouldn't call it that. But I tell you, when someone refers you for a particular position, you are held in higher esteem. At least it yeah. grants you opportunity at the table to be heard. You must be able to prove that you can do it, but it gives you opportunity. So bottom line is, as an immigrant, somebody wants to, I mean, you must network internally, externally. Internally, there's two levels. There's a mentorship and sponsorship. That's a conversation for another day. But you can't you can expect that just your proficiency and your job will get you where you want to go to. No, because at the end of the day, you're dealing with human beings. They're making decisions. So it only takes one powerful person to say, no, 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 that guy can't do it. Or no, 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 we don't want that guy. And he shuts it down. And it only takes one person to say, oh, that guy, yes, is speaking for you. Why? You've invested in relationships. You've invested in networking, right? I, I know we go through a lot, but this is one part that is very critical. You and I have done some very healthy business together. And I'm so proud because, well, how did I know you? Somebody referred you. Somebody referred me, right? Networking. And you don't know what we'll do together tomorrow, right? Have mentors. Have mentors. Not the mentors, though. Have mentors. <laughs> <laughs> People who care about Thanks. you, you know? People mm. who want to pour themselves. People who see value in you. You can see it. You can hear it. Invest in those relationships, you know? It, it, it is very critical. And, of course, I think the final thing is strategic decision-making. It's a skill. It's an act. You need to learn, we need to learn some, we need to separate ourselves and learn how to make strategic decisions, right? And create a path for ourselves. You understand? And and this is this is this value sometimes is self-initiated, but sometimes because of the quality of people we are interacting with, because of the circles we are keeping, we init they initiate that for us. They help us through that journey, right? Uh, but by time we must be able to make sound decisions, when to jump off a particular boat. When to take a, a risk, you know, when to say no to certain things, right? And when to say, oh, this is the time I need to, you know. So I, I think these two things, if I stop with just two, three things, I, I, I think if we follow through on it, we, we, we will get better results. I, I believe that. Fantastic. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I had to do that because you are that, that I like the way you just wrapped it all up as in networking education as in that's that's almost like the that's it right so th thank you very much for one spending this time with me two thank you for speaking as candidly as you have spoken because in this is value and it is value that will deliver long term. Not just to myself and yourself, but to everyone who is going to watch this video, either today, tomorrow, or in the near future. 
So on behalf of our viewers, on behalf of everyone at Africa X Media, on behalf of um, everybody backing me and behind this camera, I want to say thank you, Imole Ayo, for spending this time and thank you for sharing the way you have. Uh, to everyone, I want to say um, it's been fantastic having you with us and I will say enjoy the rest of your evening. Bye for now. Thank you.